This video is looking at some of the exam questions which were once asked on the human defence system. A question which comes up quite a lot is to distinguish between antigen and antibody. So an antigen causes the production of antibodies. We know that they are mostly protein, however there are some carbohydrate based ones, and an antibody is produced in response to an antigen. So we know that it's the B cells, particularly the plasma B cells, that produce the antibodies. So every time we answer a question it's good practice to just recall all of the information connected with that topic just to help you revise retrieval practice. So here you have your B cell and you have the antigen receptors, which we know are membrane bound antibodies. So we just call them antibodies and they're particular to that particular B cell. And here we have our pathogen and it has a specific antigen that this B cell can recognize. What is meant by the term immunity? Immunity is resistance to infection. So it's the ability to protect against pathogens or toxins. So whenever we're talking about immunity, it's resistance to infection. And if we're talking about immunity and developing it, we're discussing the human defense system. And let's just revise a bit about that. We know that it's made up of the general defense system and the specific defense system. The general defense system has two lines, the first of which is the barriers, the skin and all of that. And then we we have the second line of defence, which is the macrophages, those white blood cells, the complement system of proteins, those viral infected cells that produce interferon and the whole inflammatory response. Then we have the specific immune response and it's all to do with B cells and T cells recognising specific antigens. Outline the role of B lymphocytes in the human immune response. So that's the question. And the answer is B lymphocytes or B cells recognize specific antigens. Very important to make that statement. B cells, when activated, produce antibodies in response to a particular antigen. So that's the question answered, those two points. Now let's just write some study notes, just recall what we know, just to help us revise. So B lymphocytes or B cells are made and mature in the bone marrow. There's many different types of B cell, each with one type of antibody on its surface. That's sometimes called an antigen receptor. B cells divide to form plasma cells when they're activated, which produce antibodies and also memory B cells are produced, which confer long-term immunity. Distinguish between active and passive immunity. Well, active immunity, antibodies and memory cells are produced in response to a particular antigen. Whereas with passive immunity, no antibodies are made. Instead, antibodies made by another organism are introduced. So that's the answer to the question. Let's just see if we can recall some other information that could appear on another question. So one of the things that we should be able to do is define induced immunity. So it's the ability to resist disease by the production of antibodies. So there is active immunity where B cells produce antibodies in response to an antigen. This can happen naturally with the flu or artificially through vaccination. And there's also passive immunity where antibodies are made by another organism and introduced naturally, for example, in breast milk or artificially, for example, in a tetanus shot. Next question. In certain situations, a person is given a specific antibody rather than being vaccinated. Is this active or passive immunity? Well, this is passive immunity because the antibodies are not produced by the individual. They're not produced by that person's B cells. Antibodies made by another organism are introduced. Under what conditions might an antibody rather than a vaccination be given? Well, there could be an infection already present. It could be too dangerous to wait for the immune system to respond or to figure out how to produce those antibodies. And there might not be any vaccine available. Comment on the duration of immunity that follows the administration of an antibody. So state whether or not if you're given an antibody, if you're immune for a long time or a short time. Well, the immunity is short lived. Why? It only lasts as long as those antibodies last in the body until they're broken down. And the reason why it's not long term immunity is because you need to produce memory B cells and memory T cells to give you that long lasting immunity. And if you're given antibodies and you don't produce them, well, then you don't produce those memory cells. Lymphocytes may be divided into B cells and T cells. B cells produce antibodies. What is the role of antibodies in the body? To inactivate antigens. So antibodies attach to antigens which can immobilize a pathogen and when the antigens are attached to the pathogen it makes them more identifiable to those macrophages. 
Name any three type of lymphocytes and state the role for each. So you've got the helper T cells. They recognize specific antigens, important to say that, and they stimulate B cells and killer T cells. We know they're involved in the activation of those cells as well, but say stimulate for your exams. Killer T cells recognize specific antigens. They secrete perforin, which causes infected cells to burst or cancerous cells to burst or to die. And uh, suppressor T cells, they recognize specific antigens and they're really important for switching off the immune response. Outline how one named feature of the general defense system works. So here's a few and they're all the first line of defense. So we have the skin acting as a physical barrier against the entry of pathogens mucous membranes which produce mucus and this traps pathogens, lysozyme in tears, sweat and saliva which has antibacterial properties and then we have hydrochloric acid in the stomach which kills many microorganisms. Next question, what is a vaccine? It's a non-disease causing or you could say weakened dose of a pathogen or it could be just the antigen. Why should antibiotics not be prescribed to treat influenza to treat the flu? Influenza is caused by a virus and antibiotics are not effective against viruses. So last question, distinguish clearly between antibodies and antibiotics. Antibodies are produced in response to an antigen. Antibiotic is a chemical produced by microorganisms that prevents or kills the growth of other microorganisms and antibiotics do not have any effect on viruses. So it's probably a good idea to discuss antibiotic resistance in bacteria as well. So this is when the bacteria are not killed by the antibiotic. Bacteria develop genetic mutations and this is what gives them the antibiotic resistance and it's all connected with natural selection. So the incorrect use of antibiotics, such as not completing the course and taking antibiotics when you don't need them, for example, when you have a flu, which is virus connected, increases the chances of resistance developing. And also the gene for antibiotic resistance is found on the plasmid and this can be transferred to other bacteria. So revise antibiotic resistance. So this topic, I know I've gone into lots of detail. It doesn't have to be that detailed. You should be able to write all of the information on two A4 pages. So define pathogen, outline the details of the general defense system and discuss the second line of defense the details of it, for example, the macrophages, then be able to talk about the specific defense system, not in that great detail, just know the B cells and the T cells, where they're made, where they mature and what they do, be able to define antigens and antibodies, define induced immunity, talk about active and passive immunity, artificial and natural, give examples and then discuss vaccination. And that would be loads.